Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 914. And if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. In this video, we've got to talk about getting the top five and the bottom five. We have some numbers here, but the problem is we have zeros, and we want to see how to exclude zeros. Now, for the top five, there's a great function called large, and for the small, the bottom five, there's a great function called small. Let's see how the uh, large works. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to use this range over and over again, so I want to name it. Now, I could just highlight, click in the name box, type some uh, name, and then hit Enter. Escape, but I'm not going to do that. Since I have the name I want to use for this range as the field name at the top, I simply highlight the range. And uh, you could go formulas. Uh, create from selection, but there's a keyboard shortcut, Control Shift F3, right? And it says, hey, where is the name you want to call this? It's in the top row. It will not include the cell with the words, but all of these cells will become the name numbers. And you could prove that to yourself. Now it's there. You go to drop down, select numbers, and if it selects this correct range, you're good to go. Control F3 opens up Name Manager in case you need to edit or delete. Escape. All right, so equals large. The array, I'm going to type NU. The drop down gives us functions. Those are the function icons. When you get to your defined name, it's a dog tag. You can simply hit Tab. It's blue, meaning it sees it there. Now, that's the array of values, comma, and K, you just say, hey, give me the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it will give me you the first largest, second largest, etc. That's a relative cell reference. Control Enter and copy it down. OK, so there we go. The top five values include a 0, and I don't really want that. The next value I want is minus 1, not 0. So we're going to have to amend this. Now, what do we want? We Right now, we're dumping into large all the numbers, but I just want some of them, the ones that are not 0, because I want some of the negative ones. So I'm going to amend this and use the if statement. Remember, give me all the, the large function. We want to give it all of them except for the 0. So I'm going to say if anything in that range right there. That's the logical test. The syntax for not, which is a comparative operator, is less than, greater than. So anything in there not 0. That's the logical test. Comma, well, what's our goal? We want to dump some numbers in there, so we use our same range. So the value of true is that. We don't need the value of false. We simply close it off. Now, the thing about this formula right here, that logical test is expecting a single logical test with one true or one false. We're giving it a bunch. You can highlight this and hit the F9 key to prove it to you. Oh, as soon as we're giving it a bunch, that we're jumped into the realm of array formulas. Now I'm going to Control Z. Don't leave that there, right? And you could see if we highlight this whole thing right here, all it's doing that if is dumping just some numbers. So when I hit F9 to evaluate, you can see it's got for it's got all the numbers. The falses will be ignored. Control Z. That's an array of values we need to control shift enter and it really is the fact that this if part of it has that array of values so you have to use a special keystroke to tell excel that this is an array formula you hold control and shift and then hit enter so it's control shift enter the curly brackets up here are automatically put in that's excel telling you i understood that you wanted an array formula now i'm going to copy this down all right so there we go we've excluded these in uh, 2010, there's a great function that does not require Control-Shift-Enter. It's called the aggregate. Now, the aggregate function has a bunch of uh, functions in it, right? 14 and above can handle arrays. So, And look, large and small are one of them. So I'm going to select the number 14, comma. I'm going to here for the options, that's the second argument, I'm going to say ignore errors, which is 6, because we in our third argument, this array, we're going to create an array of values, but we're not going to get falses like the large. We're going to get divide by zero arrows, so we need to tell it to ignore those with that six. All right, numbers. Ah, uh, we don't want all the numbers. 
So we divide by, in parentheses, that same condition, numbers not 0. All right, so if you highlight this array right here, the entire thing, and hit F9, boom. You get divide by 0, but you get all of the numbers. Aggregate is just awesome, right? That 6 will avoid the divide by zeros. I better quickly undo this, Control Z. Uh, and the fact that we have to do an array in this formula, that argument says array. It can handle them without using Control Shift Enter. Comma, the K means, just like for large, boom. right? And I don't have to Control Shift Enter. I just Control Enter and drag it down. Now, the parallel for this, if you wanted to do bottom five, watch this. I'm going to try and copy this. Uh, actually, um, Control C, Control V. Notice because that was a relative cell reference, now it's looking there. Now I'm just going to do small. So if you had to do small, same construction except for now we're using small. Control Shift Enter. You did Control Shift Enter. You told Excel this is an array formula. Those curly brackets are Excel telling you, hey, I understood that was an array formula. I'm going to double click and send it down. So those are the bottom five. And finally, we could do the same thing here, but change the 14 to a 15. Control C, Control V. That list of functions, 15, is small. No control shift enter. Double click and send it down. Now, uh, one further thing, if we happened, we want the top five and the bottom five excluding zeros, but what if we had, uh, whoops, control Z, uh, we, these two values were for zeros, for example, right? That num error comes from the fact that we said, hey, give it the fifth, and um, None of these are going to, uh, that 6 is not going to handle the fact that we gave it. We said, go find the fifth biggest when there isn't one, right? That 6 is for the divide by 0. So no problem. We have, we'll see two ways to do this. For 2007 and earlier, and this is only in 2010. So 7 and earlier, this is the way we do it. Actually, sorry. In 2003 and earlier, this is the way you'd have to do it. Copy, and you'd have to do an if. The logical test is going to be, is this an error? That tells you true or false. If it is an error, which it will be down here, you come over here. We have to put a close parenthesis on that. Logical test, that's the logical test, comma, if it's an error, the value of true is double quote for show nothing. Otherwise, and you have to repeat control V. That whole thing has to run twice. Close parenthesis, that's the value of false. Close parenthesis, control shift enter. All right, now, uh, for 2007 or 10, right? Aggregate came in in 2010, but the function I'm going to use here came in in 2007. Absolutely beautiful. You don't have to run that law, that function twice anymore. It just knows, is it an error or is it not? Comma, and then you tell it, okay, in this case, I, if it is an error, I want to show a double quote. Control Enter and copy it down. Again, if you're in 2007, you do if error, and then come to the end. All right. Um, Great use for aggregate. I can't wait for a few years to uh, evolve where we all are using Excel 2010 or later, and we can all use the aggregate. All right, see you next video.